Should we just sit here and look out the window and don't film? <laughs> do we like this light? I feel like it's not the best. What do you think? Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back, and this is Elvis. I said last week I was gonna do a q and I actually thought it was gonna be later in this week, but that's fine, it's great. You guys had tons of questions. I think I got onto page six. So it's a lot. Sometimes we have stuff that people ask more than once, and I, in case you watched a bunch of them and you're like, why does she answer the same questions again? It's because this could be the first video someone sees and they don't know that I've done Q and A's before and answered that question before. So we're gonna get started in just a second. Before we start, I just wanna show you guys, I'm working on the field sweater and let me see now, is this the back? No, this is the back. It doesn't really matter. It's not that different. Um, and I just want to get light for you. I finished the yoke part. I'm in the body part. It is so pretty. I can't wait to be able to wear it. And I am knitting it in Patagonia by Juniper, Juniper Moon. Juniper Moon. In the colorway seaweed. Without further ado, let's get into the questions. It's like sometimes these ramble and they get... I don't know, I, sometimes I go too deep, I guess, and then they end up really long. So I don't know how long this is gonna be, so just in case, you might wanna get yourself a snack, grab a project to work on while we chat, you know, that kind of thing. All right, so question one, Avril P asked, what Carter are you using, Trish? This was on the one of the live bat videos I did recently. I have the largest classic Carter that they make. They come from the UK. I really do like it because that's always the next question. People ask what Carter is it and do you like it? I really like it. If they made a bigger one, an even bigger one, I would buy it. Just because when I make bats, I love to be able to make like a six to eight ounce bat comfortably. I'll link to them, they're on Etsy. I do not work with them. I do not get a commission. Okay, um, Jerry said it's fun being around all this creativity, anything with raspberry is always good. Do you buy all this dyed roving or do you do it yourself? Have a blessed week. Thank you, Jerry. I hope you have a blessed week. That was also on a bat video. I think it was the same bat video. So I do not dye most of it, but I do use stuff that I have dyed. <laughs> it's just not mostly stuff that I have dyed. I buy pretty much everything that goes into my shop I buy wholesale. That is no exception. I buy all that stuff from wholesale sellers, including the stuff that I dye. But sometimes I have, well I used to have a subscription to a different um, monthly box and they sent you like all these one ounce different things and I saved all those. When I'm making bats and I pull off a little length of something that I don't use, I keep that in there in this tub. And then I also have bought mill ends before prior to like having my channel and then I've bought mill ends from mills that's where they come from sold most of them and then kept little bits and pieces to use in videos so i have like a whole tub of extra stuff and some of that is stuff that i have dyed but all those bigger bags that you see me pull off the shelf and kind of usually start as a base color i did not dye those i do dye my own firestar i buy angelina in all different colors from etsy i think that's a question i get later but i um I do dye my own Firestar. And I've also dyed like what I consider add-ins, even though you could spin them alone. So like bamboo, like rose fiber, banana fiber, all those extra things. I've dyed my own silk to add to bats, but for the, the bigger amounts or those big bags you see, I do not dye those. I buy them already dyed. Because if I was dyeing, you know, multiple pounds at a time for my bats, that's just like one more thing that has to go through the studio and would slow me down for dyeing the custom colorways and stuff. It, it just helps me immediately get to the bats and also helps me get exactly the color I want when I'm buying it. Betienne, question for your Q&A video. 
This is such a good one. I'm a new drop spindle spinner and struggle with getting locked into my yarn. Some are very ropey, which I understand may be over twisting, but how do I get air trapped in the fibers to make the yarn more fluffy and less dense? Such a good question, especially because a lot of us, most of us, start out with comb top now. It's everywhere, kind of. This is a complicated question. I will try not to take forever. It starts with the prep. So if you want a loftier yarn, if you want more air trapped in your yarn, comb top is not your best option. Your best option is a true roll leg that you would have to card yourself, probably. I don't know of any place you can buy those like hand carded roll legs, but someone must be selling them, right? Or roving. Roving is a great woolen prep and it will help you immediately, right off the bat, get more loft in your yarn. So that's the very beginning of that process, right? And what constitutes woolen prep? Anything that is not combed without being changed is a woolen prep. So what I'm saying is when you comb it, it's a worsted prep. But if you take combed top and you run it through a drum carter, it stops being worsted. Even if you try your best to run the fibers through all parallel to each other, it stops being a worsted prep. You will not be able, you can't keep all the fibers going parallel to each other. And if you wanna go back even further, a true worsted prep, most nobody really goes by this anymore, but back in the olden days would be, every single lock would be like, going in the same direction so all the tips would be going in the same direction and all the cut ends would be going in the other direction nobody does that anymore and the reason i'm saying that is because recently somebody who just didn't know i mean i'm sure they had no malice said in one of my videos that you know it's still a worsted prep after i had drum carded the stuff with a bunch of other things added in and all the stuff and i'm like no please don't tell people that that's not correct if you card it it is woolen prep but if but a lot of commercially combed stuff also gets like the life tugged out of it the crimp tugged out of it to to some degree so a lot of times if you find something that was processed to be roving in the first place it also has more crimp more of the original crimp because it never got combed and like stretched out that way it is more fluffy it's got more crimp it's gonna trap way more air that's what i would grab if you want it to be uh more of a lofty yarn also there are some breeds <laughs> that are better or worse for that. I could go into that for like two weeks, so I'm not going to. If you want a really lofty yarn, go for something like Southdown or CVM will be very lofty. Targi is extremely lofty. Those are just some like options for you to try. There are many, 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 many more. And if you want to find out about the ones that floof up a lot, Go watch the breed study. I know it'll take you forever, but go watch the breed study because I talk about there. All those are actually comb tops that I used, except for I think one. And I talk about like the ones who really fluff up a lot. So the breed matters. The third tip I'm gonna give you is there's woolen and worsted for prep, but there's also woolen and worsted for your drafting style. So you wanna work on a woolen drafting style. Kind of the bottom of what that means is that you are letting the twist go into your fiber supply and pull out, grab out what is going to be twisted next. You stop pinching the twist off before it gets into your fiber supply and start letting it go in. Because when you draft inchworm, which there is nothing wrong with it, so that's not what I'm trying to tell you, or worsted style, where you are pinching that twist, you are aligning the fibers somewhat as you are drafting them. If you're letting the twist go into your fiber supply and just kind of willy-nilly grab whatever it grabs, it's gonna grab things that are going in all different directions and that is gonna make a loftier, squishier yarn and there will be all kinds of air trapped in there. Um, you really have to just try it to, to truly see what I'm saying, but I do think 
I'm explaining it okay. I have done videos on long draw spinning, which is a woolen style. It's not the only woolen style, but it is one, and I'll talk about it more there. So check that video out too, and that will give you some info on kind of how it works and how you can work towards that sort of drafting style. All those things will make a squishier yarn. The breed, the prep, the drafting. Oh, and also, like you said, um, over twisting it will make it seem really ropey. So over twisting can make anything too ropey, just so you know. So you also need to keep an eye on your twist and your plying twist can do the same thing. I knew that was gonna be a long one, I'm sorry. Okay, Markham said, Judy here, the blue bat is gorgeous. How would you spin that Trish? Trish? Would you be able to keep the color definition? So Judy is talking about the blue bat from this last bat video we just did on Friday. Such a good question because I would want to think about how I'm going to spin that to decide do I want to keep the color definition or do I want to let it blend and let those um, brighter colors kind of like glaze the dark blue underneath. I don't know. There are like so many different ways to spin it to give you different yarns and I've demonstrated a little bit of that in the past. I'd love to go into it super deep but also it's hard because of the time commitment so I haven't as of yet um but maybe we will sometime I have done a couple videos though on like this is just one huge bat I'm gonna take it apart spin it a couple different ways and then also we did that with um space dyed roving roving or top I think it was space dyed top from paradise fibers to show how the different ways that you might spin it will affect the way that the color comes through. So I guess I would recommend going to watch those because I could talk about that for two hours as well and nobody really wants to hear that. Maybe a few people, but mostly they don't. Sue said, hi Trish, I'm looking at that little electric wheel by Dreaming Robot. I can afford that one and it seems competent, especially if you've decided to own and use one. Oh, thanks. I am new to spinning wheels. Previous experience is all on my Takli drop spindle would you sell me on this one and why I wouldn't like try to sell you on it but I will say I think one of the biggest there's a couple different considerations and I think cost is one space is one when you're looking for a wheel and also like your own physical limitations are one so if you are thinking that you want an electric wheel I do think this is a great one. I think the customer service is super great. I did a full review on this wheel, so I would recommend watching that whole video because I really said like what I think is really awesome, what I think is maybe not as great, what I would change, you know, that kind of stuff. And I compared it to the Hanson, which is a much more expensive wheel. My opinion at the end of that is that based on the price difference, I personally think it's a better value than the Hanson, but that is just my opinion. Um, I guess I can probably assume Hanson's never going to contact me to be an affiliate, but that's okay because, um, you know, I have to tell you guys the truth. That's more important to me than if I make money or not. So Cindy Dave Davis Davis. <laughs> I only see your IDs now. I don't see your names when I do this. It says, do you have a video demonstrating your wrist two ply technique? I would love to try your way to two ply. I do. One of our subscribers daughter started calling it the turkey hand method, which cracks me up because I make my hand into this little turkey kind of. And so um, <laughs> I've been calling it that ever since. But it is, I'll link it below. There is a full tutorial on how to do that. And it's like years old now. Probably two and a half, three and a half years old. But yes, I do. And I will link it below. Okay, the same Cindy said, do you blend your fibers? I have a lot of different fibers like you. I don't know which fibers blend well together. Do you have a video on the subject or can you direct me? Okay, Cindy. Okay, let me say this. You can blend anything that you like the looks of together you can blend anything the only thing is then usually after that you have to remember to hand wash because you may have something that can be machine wash blended with something that can't but you probably were going to hand wash it anyway so i don't really consider that a big drawback but um the other consideration is that if you blend things that 
don't spin the same. So maybe they have a large um, staple length difference or maybe the texture is super different. Like one thing is very slippery or very hard to draft and the rest is a little shorter or just not very slippery, not difficult to draft. Sometimes you will get texture in your yarn from blending those kinds of things, like blending two things that spin very differently. I actually really like some texture in my yarn sometimes. Sometimes I like it to be very smooth. So I just think through how is this gonna spin together, but also you gotta sample. Just sample things. Experiment with them, try them out. I really think that's like the best school there is. A lot of us I think too struggle when we're first starting out because we don't want to waste materials, but if you are learning a lesson that's gonna like help you for the next 30 years or 40 years or even 20 years, that can't be a waste. The lessons that you learn from it are worth using some good materials to learn with. Just make a tiny little sample of something, like make one little tiny strip on your drum carter, take it off and spin it and try it and see how you like the way things spin together. Maybe make yourself a little notebook where you keep yarn samples with information about what you blended and how you did it so that you can learn from it. Tarot Lady Lissa said, have you ever knitted a sweater dress instead of a onesie? I was joking about that gray yarn with the blue, electric blue silk in it because I ended up with enough to like knit myself a whole outfit. I have finished the sweater too and I have more than half of it left. I have never knitted a sweater dress. I can't say that I don't like them because I have seen quite a few that I think are really, really cute. I also think I'd be too hot. Uh, if you guys know me, literally my entire life, I have been one of those people that runs hot. When I was a little girl, just a normal little kid, I would open my window in my bedroom because I always thought the house was way too hot and my dad would get mad and say, like shut your window I wouldn't shut it it had like a little crank the windows cranked out to the side and he would take the crank off my window so I go take the crank in the bathroom and open my window because I was too hot all the time that's been me my whole life but that's not to say that I don't like them I've seen some adorable ones I just I just haven't but maybe someday like I never rule anything out Jean Marielle said, can you show how to chain ply in a way that is really easy to understand in your Q&A chain ply for dummies? <laughs> I did. And actually, if you follow Hey Brownberry on Instagram, she's got like the most beautiful Instagram. And she actually said that she thought it was the best one she ever saw a video of how to chain ply. So I will link that below. I did talk about it and then I demonstrated it. I slowed it down. I think I did as much as I could possibly do. I would never say chain ply for dummies because I do not think any of you are dummies. I personally think they're, like I don't even think that I could find more to say about it now. If I watch the video back, I'm like, I think I said everything that I know to say to help. Anne said, Elvis looks like such a love bug. Oh my, have you tried a Lendrum? I really want you to. I have this lady named Mary, I think it was Mary White, I'm not sure. Mary came into the local yarn store that I knit and spin and all that stuff at on a spinning day. They used to have day uh, like a day set aside for people to come in and spin. During the summer, she was visiting and she brought a Lendrum and I got to spin on it and it was lovely, you're right. It was wonderful. It was the castle style. I don't think they have a, a traditional, do they? Whatever, it was a castle style. Um, sorry, not a Saxony style, not a traditional. I did think it was so nice. It was so quiet, it was so smooth. It was just really, really a nice wheel. I just don't think it's like that different from the Matchless or the Ashford, all the other castle wheels I already have. Even though I really liked it, like I didn't think it was that different. But I did think it was a very nice wheel. Cindy Surratt said, what a fun video. I was glued watching and seeing your wheels. Question, how does the Sparrow compare to the EEW6? I have the six, but have interest in the Sparrow. I'm going to do a full review on the Sparrow after I've had a little bit more time to spin on it. I haven't applied on it yet. So I will talk about this more then. I think you're just gonna to wanna to watch the review video. I'm trying to think of other ways to compare and contrast. I don't 
really love the brake setup on the Sparrow. I will talk more about that in the review, but I don't hate it. I just, it, it, to me, it's like not my ideal, if that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. The price is quite a bit more. I want to say it's like twice as much. Is that right? I think it's about twice as much. I guess it kind of depends on how much of a factor that is for you. It does seem a little bit more substantial, more, I don't really want to say heavier because I don't know if it actually is heavier. It seems a little bit stronger, I guess. I don't have not had any experience with their customer service at Daedalus, so I cannot speak to that at all. Um, and I think that is a very high factor for me. Uh, so I, I, that's a tough one because I can't, and I can say that the eel, the, the Dreaming Robots has really great customer service. I think that's the main stuff. So it really depends on what size you're looking for, how much money you want to spend. But like I said, I think it's a little bit more, um, like sturdy kind of, and I think it might be a little bit more powerful. Erica Greenwell said, I'm not sure what the beginning of this should be. I think there's a typo. Whole video. I think it's, I would like a whole video on this to learn. What do you think of building a warp winding with pegs on a wall? I have a shed with huge walls. If you go way back in my weaving, weaving videos, I'll look for it. I did start using pegs on the island in my kitchen and I wound my warp that way. I think it's a perfectly fine way to do it. I think it would be probably really nice. I'm going to do a whole video on the warping mill, but I don't have a warping board. Like what you're discussing is basically like a built-in warping board on the wall. Yes, I think you could do it. You could set up a board on a big wall in your shed. People have them outside on their houses in other countries, probably in America too. But I mean, I've seen quite a few videos where people have it like on their outer wall of their shed and they just, or their barn or whatever, and they just wind their warp right there. So I think it's a good idea. Karen said, love the Bronze Age mix. Are you planning to do something similar? I think you're asking something similar to what they did in the, um, you know, in the paradise. Cause they always have like a suggestive project. I'm struggling trying to decide with that one. I have thought about doing a few different things and I'm just having a really hard time deciding because I like it so much and it's such a small amount. It's like three ounces. I don't want to mess it up. And so I have to wait until in my head, I feel like, yes, this is it. And then I'm willing to run with it even if I mess it up. <laughs> I don't know why I have to wait till I'm ready and I feel like I came up with the right plan. I don't know yet. Carrie Marmy said, hey, is this fiber only for weaving? I'm still learning all the sewing crafts. This is about a Paradise Fibers unboxing. The fiber could be for felting, it could be for weaving, it could be for lots of things. So no, it's not just for weaving. It's most of the time I spin that fiber first and then uh, sometimes I weave with it, sometimes I knit, sometimes I crochet. Could be a lot of things after that. Christy Steckelberg said, Trish, when you get the Paradise amounts of fiber to spin some sort of small amounts, what do you eventually use them for? Please discount blending them with other fiber. So small amounts, what use them for? I cannot discount blending them with other fiber. I don't know why you would want me to <laughs> because that is one of the best options for some of them, not all of them. So I will never discount that. That's off the table right there. Let me go get something. I have a couple things that I can grab really quickly that I have made with smaller amounts. So hang on. This is a sweater for John. All of the colors in this yoke, the white was commercial yarn, the dark brown is hand spun but obviously not from a paradise package. All of the colors in the sweater, the red, blue, green, and yellow were from a paradise package, one paradise package that I combined with commercial yarns to make him the sweater. And he loves this one and I love this one. I think it, it turned out so pretty. So that's one. And this one is my sweater. One of the arms is inside out because I had it on this weekend. And this was, this whole yoke, the entire yoke, except for the gray, 
because there is some of the body gray in the yoke is from one paradise package it is the same pattern because i liked knitting his so much i modified them both a little bit though it is this all one paradise package that i divided and dyed the different colors because it had one package had two different wools in it i divided them each i dyed them I dyed them in a video and then I knit this sweater from it and combined it again with commercial yarn for the body of the sweater. So this is one of my favorite sweaters I've ever made. I love this sweater and it was Gotland, I think Gotland silk mixed. That's one thing that I have done with the pair of oh, just a paradise package. This yarn was made from an into the world package, which is the same quite a bit less fiber than the paradise packages have. The stripes on this sweater, this is a dog sweater, are from a paradise package, again, combined with a commercial yarn when I used it. This entire pair of socks is yarn from one paradise package that I dyed and spun and turned into a pair of socks. First of all, blending is a great option, but you don't have to blend it, you have to be creative with it. So one of the reasons why I really like getting those packages is because it challenges me to be creative on a bunch of different levels. Sometimes with things that I wouldn't have bought myself, it just, it challenges me to think differently and not say to myself, okay, I got this three ounce bunch of fiber. What can I make with just three ounces? Like, I don't think of it that way. I think maybe I can combine it with something. Maybe I can blend it with something. Maybe I can spin a couple things that complement each other and work them into a project together. It's a great way to challenge yourself, but if you are just getting that fiber and looking, just spinning it right out of the bag, there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely nothing. But I feel like it's a great opportunity to challenge myself to do more and think, I guess, in a different way so that I can get something out of it that is the best use of the fiber I can imagine. Okay, Modern Bygone Craft said, my matchless arrives today and I'm so excited for my first wheel. Congratulations, that is super exciting. Would you recommend double drive or scotch drive for a complete beginner? Oh, it's so hard. I have seen a lot of people say, beginners should start with this and I do not agree with that. I think that we're all different. There are many different ways to do everything under the sun. When it's me, I'm always gonna try double drive first because I do like that best, but that's what I learned with. And I think that is why people always think there's only one way to learn or there's only one way to do it. Without seeing you spin, I really can't say, but I would try both. Like take a day or take some time on a weekend and set it up for one, try it out for a while, and then set it up for the other and see how you feel. That's my best advice for someone who's never really gotten the opportunity to try them both out before. I know that probably sounds so annoying because it takes time to change the band and change your brake setup and all that stuff, but there is really no way for me to know what would be best for you. Only you can say what's best for you, and that means you have to try them out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could give people a magic answer, but I don't have one. But congratulations, that is so exciting. Suburban Artistry said, why is it that you don't need to use paper to separate your warp when using a sectional warp beam? Are there any occasions when you get irregular tension using a sectional warp beam? I'm considering buying an old loom that has one. I didn't even realize they existed before I saw it. This is something that I have really struggled to wrap my brain around. I'm going to try to explain it, but I don't know if I can. In a perfect world, the reason you do not need a separator is because those little, uh, whatever you call them, spokes, I guess, that keep your warp in its little section, like make it stack up so it's just this flat layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. That's what you want, that's what you're going for. It, it works great, I, I love it. It's a little harder to do when the stripes change. When I did that, I think that's the video you're talking about. Like that took more time than if your stripes are all identical all the way down or if it's just one color, like that is really quick. I did that recently and it was very fast. Ray Sunshine said, could I use Egyptian cotton for the stars? The singles look amazing. That was for the Northern Lights fiber. I would think you could. I would do the same thing that I did though. I would try and keep it very 
like a tiny little dab here and there. Tini said, love that cardigan, what's the pattern? <laughs> the green bat, how do I join the cage match? This was like two, two bat videos back. So I think this is the cardigan she was asking about. This is called Berlin Soft. Oh, I can't remember the name of who designed it, but I'll link it. And I love it so much, I want to knit another one. And for me to want to knit almost back to mat, back to back projects the same, that is super rare. That tells you that I loved it. And it also took a while, but it has an awesome knit in sleeve that's like part of the pattern. I mean, I can't say enough good things about this pattern. I don't think I have the right yarn. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I don't think I have the, the right amount of the right yarn to knit another one for myself right this minute, but I love it. It is so like perfect to just grab and take off with. Linda Perone said, what is the difference between a roll leg and a fake roll leg? Okay, so we did talk about this in a live recently. What I meant when I say that, I really shouldn't say it that way, is the tra a traditional roll leg would be hand carded, probably with shorter fibers, Although I, I would say it wouldn't have to be, but probably. And the point of it is for use with shorter fibers. And you would hand card two layers, so you end up with a layer on each carder. And then you take the layer, you kind of like scrape it off. I have done this on video before. You kind of scrape it off onto one carder. So there's one that's embedded, one layer that's embedded in the tines, and then one that's just kind of sitting on top of it. And then you roll those two up very like in a very fluffy sausage if you will and then you spin off the end of that typically long draw although it would not have to be because there are no rules but it was all meant to make a very fluffy yarn with a lot of loft a lot of air trapped what we do now where we use comb top in either a drum carter or blending board to make something that is rolled up into a sausage but is does not have that same beginning. So it usually comes from comb top to begin with when we do it now and it's all about making this pretty colorful like sausage of beautifulness. They're still super beautiful but they do not function in spinning the same way that that fluffy airy short fibered roll leg that was gently rolled into a little floof and then you spin off of it they don't function the same and that's why i say they're a fake roll leg but people are using that word now and have been for a long time when they talk about these colorful more tightly rolled things that we now know as roll eggs. I, this is where I never know how to do this because I am not a purist, I'm not a historian, like that part of spinning is interesting to me but like I don't really care about it a ton because I feel like we're going somewhere and where we came can inform us but it doesn't have to direct us forever. Often I feel like if we stop doing something, it was for a reason. That's gonna make someone so mad, I'm sorry. That's how I feel. So I'm not a purist in that way, but there is such a vast difference between a traditional roll leg that was meant for woolen spinning, a woolen prep for woolen drafting, and what we are using now, they are so, so different. That's why I always call out that distinction. I feel like the new ones should have a new name. That's why I call them a faux leg because that differentiates them. Maury, Mari said, I'm not sure where else to ask this. Are you planning on restocking the dorset horn in the shop? Thanks for being you, Trish. Oh, well, thank you. I think it is restocked but I will check it right after this video. It should be restocked because I do have some. And I know some of you guys have asked before like, okay, explain to me why everything's not in the shop all at once. I never know when I'm gonna go out and die like two or three or four pounds of something. So I always make sure I have enough to dye it when I feel like it and keep it in the shop. So sometimes it's like, I do have some, but it doesn't show up in the shop. So you just have to ask and I'll tell you if I don't have enough right then. Um, Christy asked the sweater you're wearing, is that the one for which you made those cool resin buttons? That's this sweater. Um, they're polymer clay, they're not resin, but yes, I did make the buttons for this and I still haven't put them on. Jennifer Kelly said, hey Trish and everybody, I never knew how to get notifications 
when there's going to be a live i would watch so many of them was in fact homesick from work today and got my new electric drum carter from clemis and clemis unpacked too how do I get a notification so I don't miss the lives? If you are a subscriber and you aren't getting notifications, make sure that underneath the little video window, there's a little bell and you click that and it should give you notifications after. It's not a perfect system. Blind Root and Hogs, who is that? Which one of you is that? I said, I got my first drum carter for Christmas. That's how I found your channel. And I am loving learning from you. I also watched your unboxing of the electric wheel. Now I'm waiting for them to be in stock. Is there a secret to getting the bat off the wheel cleanly? I don't think there's a secret, but if you pull, you got to practice pulling them at different angles because the angle makes a big weird difference. But also if I pull a few inches and I see that there's some fiber stuck, I will take one of those doffer pins, doffing pins, and just get underneath all the fibers all the way across the wires and then get them all started again and keep doing that. So if you go a few inches and you notice there's fiber stuck, get underneath it and like sort of smush it into the bat and then keep going. Some things come off more cleanly than others. It's just kind of the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Also, it makes a difference how close your teeth are, what your TPI is. So if I have something that I'm gonna make bats on, I would prefer it to be like 72 or 54. But if I'm trying to card wool, like raw wool, not raw, but wash wool to spin, I like something with more pins per inch. That's why I have two different carters. Okay, Shenanigans said that copper is gorgeous. Is that something you dyed or was it purchased from somewhere? It actually was gifted to me, but I think it's stock color of Angelina, so you can get it on Etsy. I may have gotten the first little tiny batch on Etsy, in fact. That's where I buy it. I just buy it from sellers on Etsy. I can buy it from the place I buy from wholesale, but I have to buy it in huge, huge quantities. It just doesn't seem like it makes sense for me to do that because it would take me like 10 years to use up you know all that Angelina. Lori Belmont said I love this video I just bought myself a regular size classic carter and love it can you tell me if I wanted to blend fiber before I dye it would I just dizz it off the carter to make a strip or is there a better way to keep the fibers organized for dyeing I really appreciate all you do you can do that and have it be a roving there's that way works well i haven't had the best success with dyeing carded fiber that i carded myself although i have dyed like commercial roving before i guess i should try it again now that i have a lot more dyeing experience because i haven't done it in years but I, a lot of times i have found that i had to recard because it would get compacted now i prefer to car to dye it before i blend it or spin it into yarn and then dye the yarn. Sorry. Not saying you can't, but that's just my preference. Annette said, I love this set of vid videos. That was for the dish towel set that I did, like, I don't know, a couple years ago. I What size loom did you use, please? I have a 32 inch Ashford rigid heddle loom. That was the loom in that video, so. Okay, so crazy said, have you ever drafted a roll log with a diz with a largish hole? I have. I'm trying to remember what the video was because I think it was something that I spun and wove and blended all in one video. I will try and find the video and link it below. Yes, I have. I will be honest. <laughs> I always am. You don't see me use a Diz a whole ton because I don't feel like I get tons of like value for the amount of time and effort it takes to use a Diz. I don't usually worry that my fiber is gonna fall apart because generally if I'm drafting it to spin, I'm gonna spin it pretty right away. So a big reason for using the Diz is because it kind of compacts the fibers as they come through and makes them into a roving when prior they were in a, like a different configuration, usually a roll aggy or on the drum carter or whatever. But you don't see me use them a whole ton. Van Van Alpaca one said, I love seeing the different vendor booths at the fiber festivals. Do you go to any other fiber festivals? 
festivals. I've never been to the Michigan Fiber Festival. Yeah, I go to other ones. Um, we're gonna go to a couple this year. So yeah, I go to other ones. Caitlin was asking about the electric eel wheel. Does it work in the car? And can you just leave it plugged in or does it need the battery? You can just plug it in. You do not have to have the battery. The battery is only if you're gonna go someplace where you can't plug it in. Um, yes, it works in the car. It works great in the car. Yuri Koi Wei said, I might just need to get that backpack. Do you think it would work well for the Hanson Pro 2? Yes, definitely. I currently have my Hanson Pro in a more like conventional school style backpack, but I think it would fit in there just great. And I love it. Um, Sandra said, I'm watching this as I eat breakfast before I get ready for work. Thank you for this. It made sense. Looks great. One question. Where do you find the time, energy, and motivation? I think that was a weaving video, but I'm not even sure. Thank you, Sandra. That's so kind because I often feel like I don't accomplish as much as I want to. <laughs> I never want people to feel that way because uh, this is my job like I don't have a day job this is what I do for a living to pay bills and like live life eat food you know so everybody that like watches videos clicks like on my videos shares my videos everybody that pays to be a member of the channel everybody that buys stuff from my shop everybody that buys stuff through affiliate links all of those people are the reason that I can still continue to do this. Like they keep the lights on for me and I appreciate it so much. I don't think, when you have a channel the size, it's so small, still in the scale of like what other people are doing and what other people have, I don't think people realize that your contribution makes a huge difference to somebody with a channel my size. I don't have the extra sap on my motivation, my energy, my time of a real job. I love that I think a real job is just a sap on your fun time. <laughs> you know it's true. Where do I find the motivation? Some days I don't have any, but most of the time I am super self-motivated to make stuff, learn stuff, create stuff. And I don't know where that comes from, but it's inside me for real. I'm literally thinking about it all the time. It, aside from my family, it's my passion, I guess. The motivation just comes from inside me. Where do I get the energy? It's just like, where do you get the energy to do your job? I love this job. I'm so lucky. Was just talking to Carrie Chapman about this recently because, you know, I think there was a time earlier on where I thought, well, maybe someday it'll go viral and it'll be like this huge thing. There's a lot of good that comes with having a channel that suddenly goes viral and you're like someone who everybody knows and whatever. Like there's a lot of good that comes with that, but there is also a lot of bad. And I don't know if I am a person that was cut out for that kind of life. So I feel extremely lucky that I get to do this and it is because of all of you that's the truth like if you guys stop watching or stop you know patronizing my shop or being members or watching my videos it will be done and I'll be working like back in accounting somewhere which is would be totally fine but I am aware and thankful every single day that there are so many people who do parts to support me. So I appreciate you guys and I get the energy because I love making stuff. I'm really lucky. That's the only answer I really have. I'm just so lucky. Yeah, it was all luck. Okay, Jamie said, I love some of that frosty woodland green fiber. Don't see it in your shop. Is it already sold out? It is the mid midwinter solstice fiber i didn't put a picture in and in the beginning you guys were just buying it from the video like i was running running out the door so yes you can still buy it it's the midwinter solstice there just isn't a photograph so just put it put like type in solstice and it'll pop right up for you gm gunners said can you just tighten those screws to keep the base on i don't use a battery but my base never comes off that was for the electric eel wheel i did i tightened each one like a quarter turn and no more problems problems with that so thanks you guys you really helped me out a bunch of you told me like just tighten those screws and I was like oh wow <laughs> 
I didn't do it because my whole brain was telling me before like that you want to be able to open it to put the battery but you don't need to take it in and out because you can charge it and everything while it's just in there so I finally caught up thanks Thank you, you all helped me. Laura Stewart said, hello, I adore your videos. I'm wondering what you, what are, what are the sheets you are using to wind the warp with? I'm using paper bags, but I like what you're using. I love to get some. I use Mylar sheets for drafting, like for engineers. I don't, I used to sell them in my shop, but they got so expensive from the, I was buying them wholesale and they got so expensive. I don't know, I felt, not good about charging that amount even though i couldn't afford to do it for any less so i just stopped carrying them I, they just got more and more expensive but yes you can find them so that i like the four mil um mylar drafting sheets or you can buy it on a roll which would be kind of nice for your loom jamie said how did it lose 1.6 ounces during washing this was a sampling video where i weighed something while it was raw and then washed it and then i spun it up and we waited at the end, it loses dirt, it loses shortcuts, it loses lanolin, like you expect it to lose weight during, from raw to finished yarn. It should lose weight. Some breeds lose like, they say up to half. I don't think I've ever lost half. That would be pretty extreme, but that's how it lost it. <laughs> Lovely Sheep said, can you set up a buy me a coffee, a Ko-Fi, or a buy me a coffee I would like to pitch in. I do have a buy me a coffee. I will link it below. I don't really feel comfortable asking people to do stuff like that. So I've kind of like put it in, didn't put it in, put it in, didn't put it in. Every little piece of your support, again, I just really, really appreciate it. But I've always felt uncomfortable asking for support. I know I should probably put it on every video. <laughs> it's just hard for me to do but maybe I'll get better. Maybe 2024 is the year where I get better about that kind of stuff. Probably not. Caitlin said, oh sorry, Candy said, was that your starter bundle? I got one so I could try out the Romney, I think a while back. It, she's talking about that video series I did for starting out brand new spinners on a wheel. It is, um, I was spinning the Corydale from one of those starter packs. I'm trying to think, was it the core? What it might have been the BFL. I think I was spinning the BFL from one of those starter packs. I love it. I was thinking about maybe doing those again in the shop because people seem to really like those. And it is nice for a new spinner to say, okay, so these are three breeds recommended for a new spinner. I'm not the only one that recommends those. Girl Scout Lori said, nice singles. Do you have a project in mind for the spin or is it just for the love of spinning? So that was the Care Bear singles. I was spinning them in the window in a short and I am going to make a scarf with them. They are so, so pretty. I seriously didn't think that I was in love with that um, that top after I finished dyeing it, it was Targi. And I started spinning it, John picked it. I was like, which of these should I spin? And he picked it and I started spinning it and I love how it turned out. Alice said, what does drop your flyer down mean? Next larger whirl slot, smaller? Oh man, I have to save up for a real wheel now so I can try these techniques. Um, where have you been all my life? Alice, I've been in Michigan. <laughs> Freezing my buns off. What I mean is most wheels most of my wheels, let's put it that way, provide tension with a, dr a double drive system, which is what I prefer. The way that the tension is on the drive band goes by raising or lowering the flyer because the big wheel is gonna stay where it stays all the time. So like on the Ashford, you raise or lower it just a little bit this way. And on the Matchless, you raise or lower it straight up and down. And the same with the, um, the Kromsky, the Minstrel. You just raise or lower it straight up and down. And when you have the band the same length and you raise your flyer a little bit, you provide more tension on that drive band, which makes it, well, I think that kind of makes sense, like makes both of those things spin kind of harder. They don't, the drive band doesn't slip on either, either one of those things. So if I'm saying drop your flyer down, I'm saying that's gonna loosen your tension a little bit. Jamie said, while I get the name Frankenbat, it's really gorgeous, so I'm not sure it fits. Do you always diz before spinning? So um, that must have been the one. Thanks, Jamie. 
that probably helped me find that video. I don't always diz them, I seldom diz them. And I just call it a Frankenbat because it's got parts of all these other things put together to make one thing like Frankenstein. You call it a kitchen sink bat, you can call it whatever you wanna call it. I just see myself as a mad scientist or Again, when I'm making bats, I also see myself as the Swedish chef from the Muppets and just like taking all this different stuff and just saying like, we're just gonna throw it together, woo! That's how I see myself. Although I don't think that's how scientists do it. KTW said, I love the dye box recipe idea. Have you ever used RIT all-purpose dye on your wool? If so, what is your opinion for of it for first-time dyers? I have never used RIT on wool. I've used RIT to do, to do tie-dye shirts with our kids many years ago. I am not an expert on RIT, but what I have read is that it, it contains dye for like all different fibers. One of the things I like about acid dyes, or even if you use the food coloring type dyes, you can use the gel, you can use the liquid, the gel will give you more like punch of a color. So the reason I like protein dyes that are, sorry, the, I like acid dyes or the food coloring that is meant for proteins or whatever, is that when you use them, your dyes should, if you do it properly, should exhaust. And when the dyes exhaust fully, you end up with clear water in your pan and you aren't rinsing tons of dye down your sinks, whatever, just throwing it away. And when you use RIT dye, it really doesn't matter what type of fiber you dye, you will end up rinsing a ton of dye down your sink. This is the same reason why, and I've talked about this in the cotton dyeing videos, I really struggle with using the fiber reactive dyes to dye um, all the plant fibers, not just cotton, because I rinse so much dye away and it's just like, it just feels like a waste. Also, I can get the gel food coloring at the same place where I would buy the RIT dye and the gel food coloring is gonna exhaust. So I'll, I would just go for that. Christy said I have a ladybug and have been leaving on the shuttle for the largest bobbin even when I use regular size shocked bobbins. It's both fit on the large one. Does this practice cause problems or incorrect spinning? I think you might be saying that you're using the big flyer? I'm not sure. If you're saying that you're using the big flyer, it's none of it's incorrect, but um, I guess I need to know more about what you mean when you say shuttle. Okay, Christy also said, would you fill us in about what drama happened during Rhinebeck? <laughs> The drama was not at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. The drama was actually at a different event going on at the same time called Wool and Folk. I did not go, so I don't feel qualified to talk about it. I mean, I've heard stuff, of course. I, If I hadn't been there in person, I don't feel like it's right for me to talk about it. Um, not a drama channel and I don't really respect a channel that doesn't actually do anything, but like just makes money by talking about other people's like mistakes and problems and stuff. So I don't wanna do that. You can look it up yourself. There are plenty of people making money off that drama, so you can find it. Tracy asked, your wedding ring looks really nice. Did you have it touched up? She's talking about this tattoo. It actually should be this way, I think. I did not have it touched up. We have been married. 17 years it was in October and so it'll be 18 years this year I've never had mine touched up John's never had his touched up and they both look pretty good and they told us finger tattoos sometimes completely disappear so I don't know I guess like this is a sign of the marriage right Max said you are a joy to watch thanks that's so nice I just found your videos today and I'm so happy I did where do you buy the sparkle you add to your batting on Etsy Except um, if it's Firestar, I already mentioned that I buy it wholesale and I dye the colors that I want. Do you dye your materials before making the batting or do you buy it already colored? Both, but mostly I buy it already colored. Where do you buy your various fleece to make batting? Um, I don't, 
I buy it all from a, a vendor that sells to that sells wholesale and any suggestions on a drum carter so I love my classic carter a lot I think there are many good drum carters out there so I think there's a lot of great carters out there and there's a lot of considerations so there's like price size what you want to do with it ultimately um what you think your main uses are going to be which isn't always the same all those things factor in but there's a lot of great ones out there and you should definitely watch all those facebook um used spinning equipment marketplace groups check them out because you can find great deals there sometimes that is the whole five and a half pages I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you a couple more times this week because we got cut off on the Sunday live and I'm going to add a couple short lives during the week to make up for that. I hope your February is going amazing. We're already in the second month of this year. <laughs> you literally can't stand it. And I hope that everything's going great for you. I will see you guys soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.